Welcome. My name is Dr. Howard Gendelman, and I'm chairman of the Department of Pharmacology and Experimental Neuroscience here at the University of Nebraska Medical Center. I'm here representing a new initiative, the Nebraska Neuroscience Alliance. It's a group of physicians and basic scientists who have merged resources together to make a difference from the laboratory bench to the patient bedside, to find new cures, new opportunities, and new endeavors for Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, multiple sclerosis, and HIV dementia, among other neurodegenerative disorders. Together, we will make a difference. And with our partnership in the community, we'll see things, merge things, and travel ways that we haven't gone before to make this university and our endeavor something special and beyond our dreams. After a year and a half to two years, he said, Kim, I'm sorry. There's nothing more I can do for you. And I was just like, like he kicked me in the gut. I'm like, well, well yeah, you can. And he goes, no, really, I can't. So I'm going to refer you to UNMC because they are much more aggressive and they specialize in MS. Sometimes I say, why me? Why me? Why me? I know what Alzheimer's is. I know what it does. Um, we didn't have any in our family, nor was there any in Sharon's family. But I was very familiar with it because Sharon worked with elderly. That was, she was an RN and worked with people with Alzheimer's. So I knew exactly what it was, and I knew she was too young to have it. She was 54. There's no way. I'm 52 years old. I'm November 16th, 2006. I was diagnosed with HIV. Within three, four months, I was diagnosed with AIDS. Uh, your CD4 count, a uh, healthy person's 800 to 1500 cells, whatever, I'm not, don't quote me on that. I had 27, so I was like that close to death. The only thing that comes to mind with Dr. Swindell's is when I sat in this room, scared, lost, um, seeing all these doctors come in, I had no idea, you know, what was going on. She walked in and she got right in my face and she said, are you gonna die? Do you think you're gonna die? And I said, no, the good Lord hopefully will keep me around for a while. And she says, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna let you die either. I told him I wanted to be part of some drug trials and some clinical research and to try to help move things forward. And he said, well, I have a colleague in Omaha that's involved with the same trials up here, and I'm not sure why you would want to come all the way to Kansas City if you have that a Parkinson specialist in Omaha. I, I had no balance at all. I was using a cane to get around and eventually was in a wheelchair. The POM study is this electrotactile device where you place it on your tongue and it talks to your brain stem and it's trying to retrain my brain. It's basically a balance study and then they work in challenge exercises for balance and also treadmill work to try to work on your gait. Kim's results have been fabulous uh, for the seven weeks that she's been yep. on it. So now I'm able to play the piano again. I'm able to swing my tennis racket, which I haven't done in years. A lot better balance and narrow gate, yeah. We're in a clinical trial and as part of the clinical trial, we come here every six weeks getting a, both a medication and then every other time getting an MRI to make sure that there are no changes and so forth, adverse changes. Whether the medication works or doesn't, it still is a stepping stone towards the final cure. There are roads to go down and hopefully you find the road that goes directly to your destination. But if you go down a road and before you go very far, you've, you get the do not enter wrong way sign. You've still progressed 
you can turn around, you can go back, and you've learned that that's not the road to go down. They may learn that's not the direction to go, we need to go down another road. There's thousands of roads. So anything that gets you towards the right road is progress and, in my mind, success. Yay! Uh, put me on the one pill, the triplet. Now I'm undetectable and my CD4 count, finally, after five years, almost five years, is 300. I mean, I'm struggling to get up to five. My grandson who lives with me makes sure, Grandma, did you take your pill? So I do take my medication. So that's basically, you know, I'm living in a uh, proof that you can't let HIV take control of you. You have to can take control of it. It took me a couple of years. And come back next year. There are a lot of treatments available now that there were not five years ago. So yes, I do feel lucky. So I did take part in the clinical trial and they don't want you on any other meds if you're trying a new med. So for that first year and a half, that's what I did. And I felt like I made a lot of progress learning how to modify my own experience in Parkinson's. It's almost like you're winning a game that nobody else is in and they might not even be aware of. But little victories and little moments when you forget that you have Parkinson's and you can and it feels wonderful. Those are those are victories. It isn't just Omaha that uses the University of Nebraska Medical Center, it's the whole state. And in this illness, that's really true. So basically, this is the area. So it was Kathy and Mary Philippi, who, who were nurse practitioners. And the reason why you stay is because those two people, especially, yes. were so dedicated yes. to their work yes. and to the research side of it and to the treatment of people. Yeah. And uh, that's it. I mean, that's amazing to me. And uh, we have never regretted one time ever no. going to UNMC. No. I'm proud of myself now. I'm proud of who I've become, who the person that I've become. And it has to do with my doctors giving me that love and support and treat me like a human being. The people in this area are so fortunate to have the Med Center because so much happens here. So much research happens here. And it's a, it's a, it's an untold story. We could really offer a variety of drug targets for, um, for design of therapeutic drugs that will help the older population live a more meaningful and independent life and also try to uh, help people with diseases like Alzheimer's that would really make their lives much better. Genetic technology is caught up so that we can diagnose uh, changes in, in these genes. So now we can give families much more accurate information. The basic science researchers can look at it and actually find out what are those genes doing and how could they maybe be counteracted. And so from diagnosis, we may actually uh, be able to go to therapy as those basic science studies are then translated back to, to people. As a scientist, we have the obligation to educate uh, the community about the research that we do, how it's going to help them, and so on. But I think the, it, the community has also an obligation to be involved in, in the research so that they can really understand it and trust it when it comes and affects their life. Community support has been critical for uh, Monroe Meyer, for a lot of uh, the researchers on campus. So the only way any of this stuff gets done is through financing of clinical trials, wherever that money comes from. And if it's not done, the piper's gonna get paid at the other end. And you're either gonna have people out on the streets or you're gonna have cured people. Public funding shouldn't be the only place to turn to when it comes to research. And the reason is because it's affecting everyone. It's affecting businesses, it's affecting um, you know, their employees. Right. Um, and so to me, I mean, private businesses should be funneling money wherever it needs to go for the research for these diseases yes. because it is going to help the business. It's going to help their employees. Right. Okay. It's going to help the families. And I mean, what more would you want when it comes the to the community itself? What more would you want? With your help and your support and your direction, we will make a difference. We'll make the University of Nebraska and neuroscience one of the best, if not the best, in the world.